to those left behind. Women all worn out with worry, barely holding on to hope but holding on. Children whose golden years have been ground down for global politics and shrunken men and women, hands all fishes and gnarls and sparrow-like fragility. All powerless, but together, united in this kingdom. She knows war never changes, war never changes. But this one's great, this one's the last, to end them all it's been so bad. She knows she'll find no shelter in the shell holes, but he'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back. They say, the kids will live in this brave new world, they say. They say, worry not. But she can't not worry when the worry starts. She gets the telegram. It all falls apart. It's October 1918. The frozen grass holds the morning mist over a sky so clear it cuts and she can see him. Yeah, she can see him. Dreamlike. Standing at her open door, vivid in the light. Contrast enhanced and smiling that incredible smile. He'd be perfect forever there. Where the day spills its watercolour into the dusk, no different to when she'd waved him off. And his hair, a slow wave she could sink into. She'd have got lost in his hair if she could, arms outstretched, spinning like a playground pup, all glee. She loved wild things wildly and soft things softly and loved being all lazy in his soft safety. She imagines dancing with him at the front, or her image of it from illustrations, all quagmires and blackened stumps, stark and dystopian monochrome, and breathing as one with him one last. How did he die? Did they pull him from the rubble, powdered grey, ghost-like and crying? Surrounded by pieces of people, did he die like a gladiator learned to die to save face, sat up, as though a weary traveller resting a moment, a scarlet shock leaping from his sepia chest? Did he have a good death? Is there a good death? She'll never know. And it's the not knowing that hurts the worst. She sees his empty hearse. No. There is no glory in death, but is there glory in life from death? Her wet eyes bring her back into her skin, her anger stings within, she feels wrong, but she knows bloodthirsty people should bite their tongues, it's been a few months now that he's been gone, and the bevel tip bad news stings less now, slightly, so she absorbs her disorder somehow nightly, and whenever she passes those signs saying dad's on the front line, what are you doing for those he left behind, she knows she's doing him proud. It's October 1918 now, and the morning's crisp. She pulls her coat in tight, breathes more mist into being, squinting at the sun, barely seeing. The day's just begun, so she knows the cold, soft focus of the fog we burnt away. Eventually, and all be warm, and nothing else will hurt, and at the factory there'll be moments she'll forget he's gone. She knows war never changes. But at least this is the last one. At least this is the last one. <laughs>